I was trained to be able to create an illusion. I would draw vases of flowers from the time that I was a child. Looking at those paintings, you would probably see the promise in that, in that child's eyes. But I absolutely had no idea the power of art, what art could be. You kind of feel like it comes from somewhere else. The art's in you. It's about your possibilities, your future. That should be like people's daily affirmation. In the end, you really don't care about objects. You care about people. And that's really kind of the highest state that art can take you to. This guy. Oops. My hero, Jeff Koons, is the most successful American artist working today, whose sculpture tulips sold in 2012 for the second highest price ever for the work of a living artist. His 40 foot tall puppy, which displayed at Rockefeller Plaza in 2000, was deemed the public art event of the decade. His first full career retrospective is planned for next summer at the Whitney Museum in New York. Thank you for being here. A college classmate said that you were the best draftsman at school. Was drawing your first step with art? I started taking art lessons when I was about seven years old. Mm -hmm. You know, I was trained to be able to create an illusion. I would draw vases of flowers from the time that I was a child or barns out in uh, the field uh, in wow. perspective. But I absolutely had no idea the power of art, wow. what art could be. And uh, when I was in high school, I'd always go to art class uh, during like a study hall or any free times, and I would make things. But uh, art was still something that I think I associated with anxiety hmm. because it was about performing, uh, trying to kind of make something well. And it, it wasn't until this kind of understanding, uh, the very beginning of art school, that uh, art's this great connector to all the human disciplines mm. so effortlessly. I mean, a anything can connect you, but art so easily connects you to philosophy, sociology, right. you know, aesthetics, uh, physics, just uh, mathematics. The work, mathematics. Yeah, yeah the, the idea to, in a way, be a little bit of a dilettante and be involved with all these areas of my life. It's thrilled. As a young artist, you replicated old master paintings. Did you still feel creative while you were doing that? Uh, my father was an interior decorator and he had a furniture store. He would say, Jeff, you know, my uh, one client would really love a painting like this Watteau. And, uh, you know, would you want to make, uh, you know, a copy of this? And it wasn't a copy that this is the Watteau. Sure. I signed these, uh, Jeff Koons, et cetera. But I would paint these uh, paintings for my dad. And it was fantastic because I developed kind of a sense of confidence and uh, my dad would put them in his showroom window and uh, it was where, really where I exhibited for the first time. Looking at those paintings, you would probably see the promise in that, in that child's eyes and in that child's work. You know, they're your formative years, right? Uh, formative, but you know, art's really about freedom and exercising your freedom. And uh, so, this was just more of a technical uh, aspect. I really learned aesthetics there. And uh, I would go in, I'd realize that uh, one day a room would have the, uh, the decor, mm. uh, the furniture maybe of a, a, a paneled uh, library, and you have a dark couch and maybe some red chairs, and you would have all the uh, kind of trimmings of a library. And maybe I'd go back two weeks later and it would be kind of French provincial living room. And uh, so I realized that colors and textures could really uh, affect the, uh, the way that you feel. And I think the sense of a voice of an object uh, and just something displaying itself for, for what it is. You know, a lamp would just be there. And so uh, I think my involvement with the ready-made comes from uh, also looking at uh, objects, ashtrays, uh, things in his showroom and just kind of picking up on their own little voice in a way of, uh, of displaying what they were. It's almost like when those items are in the room, like when they're part of an ensemble of like a room, we walk right past them. But when those things are singular and by themselves, you cause the perceiver to look at it again, look at the dimensions again, look at the texture, look at the color, I've always been an admirer of like your ability to single out an item and give it its uh, angular and dimensional just do. I think what people are really highlighting and what they're really uh, 
that's the perfect word. Yeah. That's what you do. Well, but they're, they're getting a sense of their own lives, their own interaction with these things. It's not about those objects, mm -hmm. but it's, a, it's about their own kind of acceptance of, uh, of who they are and their own uh, possibility and what excites them and this sense of freedom. And then to go on to kind of uh, maybe a, a pure state of idea. I remember when I was trying to photograph him, he's, you know, putting his mustache up and, you know, telling me that, you know, I can't hold this pose forever, kid, you know. And I just remember uh, feeling like, you know, I would love to do this. I would love to be involved with art. I'm finding that everybody that I love and respect, they all tap in somehow. And then they're able to do it on call. The exercising of freedom to me is really important and it's more absolute consciousness of what the capabilities uh, of your life are.